cancer autotrophs and make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. They combine carbon dioxide from the air with water from the soil, using energy from the sun to make glucose the food and the waste gas oxygen, which is released into the air. The light energy is absorbed by a green pigment called chlorophyll, which is found in the chloroplast of the cell. The glucose made by photosynthesis is used in a variety of ways, such as to release energy in respiration, to make cellulose used in plant cell walls, to make proteins for growth, to make lipids found in seeds, to make sucrose which is transported around the plant in the phloem, to make fructose found in fruits, and any leftover is stored as starch in the leaves. To find out whether a leaf has been carrying out photosynthesis, we can test a leaf for starch. This starch test is the basis of three different experiments you need to know for your GCSE course. To investigate the requirements of light, carbon dioxide and chlorophyll for photosynthesis. In the practical today, I'm going to test the leaf of a variegated plant for starch. A variegated plant has areas of the leaf which are green with chlorophyll and their white areas which have no chlorophyll in them. First of all, I need to de-starch a plant to make sure it has used up all its stores of starch so that I know any starch I detect in the leaf is from photosynthesis. To do this, I left a healthy plant. So here I am using a geranium and I put it in a dark cupboard for two days. After the plant has been in a dark place for a couple of days to de-starch, I'm now going to put it on the windowsill for three days so that it gets plenty of sunlight for photosynthesis. After three days in the sun, we take the leaf ready for the iodine test for starch. So I've got my iodine ready, but that can't actually get into the cells of the leaf just now. What we have to do is prepare the leaf so that iodine can enter the cells. To do this, we need to boil the leaf. This kills the cells and disrupts that partially permeable membrane around the cells so that the iodine solution can get in. With a geranium leaf, it only needs to be boiled for about 30 seconds. Other leaves may need a little bit longer. Now the cell membrane has been disrupted, we can remove the chlorophyll so that we can see the colour change when the iodine solution is added. To remove the chlorophyll, the leaf needs to be boiled in ethanol. As ethanol has a lower boiling point than water, we can actually take a boiling tube, put the leaf into the boiling tube, add ethanol, and then put that into the water that has just boiled. However, at the moment, we have the Bunsen burner still on, and ethanol is highly flammable. So before we can get the ethanol out, we must turn the Bunsen burner off. Now that the Bunsen burner has been turned off, which is a very important safety point which often comes up in exams. We can then take the leaf and put it into the boiling tube. And now take the ethanol, cover the leaf in the ethanol, and now we can put it back into the water and you should be able to see it's starting to boil. We're now going to leave that for about five minutes because it takes that long for the ethanol to remove the chlorophyll from the cells. As you can see, the ethanol has turned really rather green from all the chlorophyll it has removed. So I can now remove the leaf, ready to test it with iodine. But the ethanol has made the leaf very brittle, so I can't spread it out yet to add the iodine. So I need to wash it in the warm water before I can spread it out on the tile. Now that leaf is spread out, I'm ready to add some iodine solution. And this will hopefully soak into the cells. And if starch is present, we will get a blue black color. And we just have to leave the iodine to soak into the cells for a couple of minutes. As you can see from the results, they're very clear. Around the outside, we have an orange area, which is where the there was no chlorophyll. In the middle, where there was chlorophyll, it has gone blue-black, showing that starch is present. This shows that starch is only produced where chlorophyll is present. 
This is because chlorophyll is required to absorb sunlight energy so that photosynthesis can occur. So what have you learned from this experiment? First of all, you should have learnt the main stages of the starch test and the reasons behind each of these. Then you must know the safety points of this experiment, such as the fact that alcohol or ethanol is highly flammable, so you need to turn the Bunsen burner off, and also you must wear goggles so that you don't splash anything into your eyes. And finally, that chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis, as this is the green pigment that absorbs light energy, which drives the reactions to make glucose.